Welcome back, guys. We are here for another episode of Brainstorm Buddies. As always, it's a charity podcast where Melissa and I talk about all things magic. Uh, and this month, all of the donations and uh, ad revenue goes to the National Abortion Federation. So if you guys enjoy the stream, make sure you guys share it with your friends. It's for a good cause. Welcome back, Melissa. Thanks for having me. Today is something sort of special. A new set is out and we are doing the streamer early access event and we're going to be playing the new Dominaria. This is my very first draft and Melissa's since her first draft since playtesting. Are you excited? Yeah, I'm super excited. I probably draft set like in development i don't know a dozen or so times okay. it's really fun surprisingly the less times than other sets for some reason i'm not sure why i must have been busy during i think i was really busy that time anyway yeah that makes sense because you were talking about in our last episode if you guys didn't see that go check it out but melissa this wasn't your uh main set that you were on for development so i mean i guess you would probably be busy developing another set yeah, I, at the time I was, oh man, I was actually, I think I was on like three projects, which is too many. They messed up. Um, but one of them was Brothers War, and um, another one was uh, Game Night 3, which uh, is the new player, five player box set. Do you know what that is? I do, actually. Okay, cool. Like a lot of people are like, Game Night, wait, is that the Jimmy and Josh thing? No, it's like a, it's a product for new players. Yeah, I think that those are really fun. It's a great way to get some people at a card store together and, and playing games. So we're going to go ahead and co-draft. Yeah. And Melissa is going to answer some questions from the chat as we go. Um, and if you guys are watching this on the YouTube channel, if you guys have any questions and you want to feel included and ask things as well, feel free to post a uh, comment down below. Let us know what your questions are. And I will try to get them included in another sort of Q&A session with Melissa in the future. Nice. That's a really good idea. Uh, this is a good way to find topics for us. Just asking the chat. <laughs> I mean, it's technically their channel. We just work here. So whatever they want to see, we will provide. Absolutely. You heard it, chat. All up to you. Yanks asked a really good question about what lessons did we learn from past artifact sets to mitigate the problems of like artifacts tending to break magic. This was something that was really on our minds. And I think if I gave answers, it would give away too much. So I'm going to just like not answer the question, but just say, uh, Yes, this is something that we thought about because, you know, every artifact set never fails. There's going to be something, like, messed up in it. Um, I, I guess there is an answer that I can give, actually. Um, like, one problem with a colorless card is if it ends up being too strong, since every color has access to it, it ends up just being in every deck and is, like, ubiquitous. You know, like, Skull Clamp, Umazawa's Jite, um, Smuggler's Copter are some examples. So one development that we've actually started doing like long ago, like not that long ago, but a while ago was colored artifacts. If you give them colors, then not every color, not every deck has access to them. So like that, that is a, a tool um, we use going forward to prevent that like skull clamp issue. Nice. Someone was asking what I was eating. I just had a little, a uh, couple of cashews. I have this, this is called my emergency. I usually have emergency peanuts or emergency Pocky. And so when my stomach is growling and it's starting to pick up on the mic, then I just eat some of those. And that's enough to tide me over for like the last hour or two of the stream that I need to, to push through. Oh, we lost a person. Oh, they came back. All right, so I'm really behind in chat. So a um, uh, question about casual play team. Is it mostly commander or are there other formats? Um, so primarily it's commander and player formats like jumpstart. Um, but we also um, think about, like, casual, constructed, um, like, kitchen table play. Like, imagine either a new player or somebody who's coming back to the game after a while, like, opening a booster box or opening, like, ten packs and adding it to their existing collection. So, like, that's something that we keep in mind, because, like, a lot of Magic players do play Magic like that, where it's just, like, they don't, you know, net deck and, like, find the strongest cards to play. It's just, like, here are the cards I own. I will play, you know. How fulfilled do you feel developing the game versus playing it competitive? That's a really deep question. Wow. That is a deep question. Um, yeah, uh, I do like my job a lot. I kind of feel like this was a good next step in my magic playing career.
career, you know, like I've done a lot of things in magic, you know, like from get the most casual levels to judging to working in game stores to teaching new players all the way up to the pro tour, you know, so this feel this felt like a, a good like, hey, how do I level up even further? And it's a really difficult and challenging and really rewarding job. So yeah, definitely feel fulfilled. I do miss playing competitively in, in a lot of ways. And in a lot of ways, like, what I do now is a lot better. Guys, can we spam some Corgi butts in the channel? Schultz Cubed with 50 gifted subs, helping us get to our thousand sub goal for our big tournament. Wow, thank you so much, Schultz. Holy crap. Um, I just wanna say that this draft pod is gonna be awesome. absolutely insane. I just went to like the, uh, you know, the magic streaming page and I can see all the streamers waiting to get into the draft. So it's Caleb oh, B, nice. us, Death C, and I keep scrolling down. It's Tappy Toe Claws. Um, there's oh, like awesome. a, you know, basically all the play people here trying to get into the screen. You can see them on the early access page. One more. How long ago did planning for Dominaria begin? I know Wizards planned these decks way in advance. Yeah, so very far in advance. Um, like something along the lines of seven years between like what world are we visiting and what's the story to um, exploratory and vision design to set design? Um, and then even when the set is locked down, it still takes a very long time to do like editing and packaging art and actually printing the cards. So yeah, I think it's something like seven years. Holy crap. Yeah, there was, um, we were talking about on Magic Mics, there was a job up on the Wizards website for like lead, I don't remember the exact phrasing of it, but it was uh, lead vision for D and D. I think is what it was. And then in the job description, it I was like that. be able to like craft from the start the plan for D and D for the next twenty five years or something like that. And it was like mm -hmm. uh, top top to bottom, uh, where we're going, what we're creating, what, you know, what characters we're looking at, what worlds we're going to experience for like the next 25 years of D&D &D is what the, like the position they were hiring for. And I was just like, holy shit, I wouldn't know where to start. Yeah, same. So it totally it does not surprise me to hear that you, you know, magic is starting from the floor at five, you know, seven years or so talking about like, this is the story progression. This is how we can get from A to B and then eventually, you know, end up at, x or however far so it's pretty crazy yeah just like thinking about the person who has that job in magic nice like he's been working at wizards since the very beginning and i don't know is really smart and knows everything and i think it'll be very hard to find another person like him because he's just so experienced all right in card games real quick know. i'm gonna steal you melissa we have uh, okay. a draft Nice. Unfortunately, we didn't get any uh, payoff defender card, but uh, we got kind of a poopy elf lord. Uh, pretty aggressive. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, gruel elf. Yeah. And, um, um, I'm not just going to take the removal spell because I don't think we're going to have time for you to make an input here, but if you. Oh, yeah, sure. Have. Um, uh, I, I guess I will say I like this Yavamaya iron. Class, Done. I, I don't know what, what Done. Called, yeah, that's but, what I was trying to but, pronounce, too. Like he, he seems really solid. Like, he's, like, the rate is pretty good, and if, if your red is just upside, yeah. um, you just can sometimes get a, a haster. What All is right. this threats undetected? Search your library for up to four creature cards with different powers. Reveal them. Your opponent picks two, puts two in your hand, and two into your li uh, library. And there's also a tail swipe. Mm. One mana instant speed. I like speed. tail swipe. It goes great with our first pick. Yep. Yeah, I would probably highlight that and then see what else we got. And, like, that, that's kind of like our default pick if we run out of time. Lightning, Lightning strike. Strike's always nice. Mm hmm. Um, the Juniper Order Root Weaver seems solid as well, but I like Tailsway better. Um, nothing really jumps out to me as, like, hey, this is better than Tailswipe. Is Lightning Strike better than Tail Swipe? I mean, if we have the Locust, I kind of like being in red as well, right? Yeah, like, the thing to mostly ask is, like, is it worth, like, committing to red for, or is it better to stay on color? And, like, for me, I like staying on color. Okay. 
it just keeps us more open for other things. Like, we don't know if we're going to be in red. Is now the time to be in red? I don't know. I found that this so far, this set seemed pretty easy to splash, so I don't hate the idea of, like, splashing a lightning strike either. This uh, Sangir Connoisseur was pretty good, I remember from the set review. It's double yeah, black. Yeah, I, but... I remember this card being really powerful in playtesting, too. Let me see what it, where, did, where did it end up. When one or more sure. other creatures die, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, this card's nice. Um, other sort of on colory things. Uh, I did kill someone with this aggressive sabotage. It's a... Oh, yep. They uh, discard two and take three. That's a surprising amount of damage, actually. Yeah. What do you fun think, vampire? Fact about, I, I would take the vampire. Uh, fun fact about the uh, person who led this set, um, Ian Duke. <gasps> He's uh, Reduke's brother. But defender. he loves mind rots. That is a defender. I can't argue with that. That's a defender. What else is in here, though? Like, what is this green common? It just costs less for your basic land, so yep. probably going to cost, like, about five, which is medium. That doesn't seem that, that strong, actually. And then there is another Black Defender, and there's the uh, Phoenix Chick, which was fine, but I'm not really seeing anything in green or black that I can't live without. Yeah, same. I guess we can try the Defenders. So anyway, about the mine rot, he loves mine rot like more than anybody I've ever met. So whenever he's like leading sets, he tries to find cool takes on mine rots that people will actually be excited to play and draft. And there it is. There's the mine rot. I think it's sweet. Yeah, I like it. We have a green black land, which seems pretty decent. The spider. Mm -hmm. um, this zombie knight costs one less for each creature in your graveyard. I'm kind of feeling the land. What do you think? Yeah, I'm feeling the land, too. The, the snare spinner is a um, nice, like, curve filler if you need another two drop, but, like, it's kind of, like, polar. Like, it's amazing against flyers and kind of crappy against other things. Like, if you're aggressive, that card is not what you want. All right. We have not a lot going on in green. We're at best of one, so we don't really care too much about broken wings. We have this really... There is this land... Yeah, and we have an aggressive black card, and that's kind of it. Yeah, like what the do land. these blue cards do? We have this pixie who turns your lands into other other lands for domain mostly. So if you're mm -hmm. domain, this this card is what you want. And then we have a draw spell with kicker. Each opponent discards. I think it's the land. Yeah, sure. Let's do the land. There's also this like uh, flowstone infusion, which is kind of like a pump slash shock, depending on how it ends up. Yep. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's similar to a card called I Immolation. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that the card I'm thinking of? It was, I think so, It yeah. was a reprint from uh, Midnight Hunt. Here's a pretty sweet 4-4 four, four Reach for 5 that says Domain deal damage to an opponent equal to the basic lands. And we also have a Bark Weave Crusher, which is just a 2-5 Enlist for 4 mana. Yeah, what do you think about Enlist? I think it's okay. I think it's a little worse in white. All right, um, yeah, I, I guess... Uh, oh, what did we take? We just took the Barkweed Crusher. It was like the on-color thing. Oh, that was that was the enlist thing. Yep. All right, this Maria, not a draft card. Nope, it's, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 if we happen commanded. to be in those oh, colors. Oh, it's a 3-3 three, three for 3, actually. Uh, yeah, I, okay. I didn't really consider how big this guy was. Um, and then we've got another one of the Outriders and the Aggro 2-drop. And also this little uh, Tainted Apparition, if you have any feelings. The Tainted Apparition. It's just a pumper. Yep, that's no, what I'd we're taking. Take one of the... Oh, okay, sure. We're, we're... All right, we're taking it. We're out well, of time. It was out of time, yeah. So <laughs> if you have any suggestions sooner rather than later when we're this deep. All right. Do we have Elves? There's only like six in the whole set and they're pretty bad, but we have this okay. other one. Forget about but... him then. We have the iron class, so maybe? Yeah, well, I think if you need a decent amount of elves to take that. You can take the blue-green land and try and do domain. Okay. And then it allows you to splash your, your kicker cards. Okay, All right. this, rare, this green rare is back. What do you think? I'm pretty indifferent to it, because it has to be different CMC, and then uh, it doesn't feel good to me. Yeah, I guess you, you well, it's 
based on power, seeing like a one, a two, a three, and a four is how doable it is. And you need like a variety of them too, right? So. Yep. Might I probably work. would have just taken the uh, the two drop just in case we end up going gruel. Uh, I think mm -hmm. aggressive. Oh wait, defender. Hmm. Do we take the defender? Yeah, let's do it. You never <laughs> know. Uh, and we wield uh, two defenders when it enters back. Oh, that's search. the defender searcher? Yeah. Oh, we're doing it. We're, we're playing defenders. Okay, let's do it. All right, but we do have to get the uh, the white thing that makes tokens. All right, what is this guy? Three, three. I think this reanimates stuff. Four, yeah. Other zombies have vigilance. Whenever a, another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Except it's a zombie. That seems insane. Yeah, we should take that. That card <laughs> seems sweet. And so, we're probably just not playing green. We'll see. Maybe. Four, four color defender. We can be flexible. We have dual lance. That's true. But like this seems like worth switching or splashing for. Whenever this elf enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. That seems pretty cool, too. That card's sweet, too. And it's an elf. Yeah. For that elf lord that we don't have in our deck. There's also this Terrace under. I really like this card. Oh, yeah, this card. There's so many cards for us. I don't know what to do. Yeah, I think, I think we're going to just end up drafting, like, five-color random good stuff. I don't actually know what we're doing. Mm-hmm. The War Leech, it's like power and toughness equal to your biggest thing in your graveyard, I think. Uh-huh. Highest mana value among cards in your graveyard. So, not really into that. Not, not that impressive. Um, there is a Bite spell. There is a uh, Black-White Duel. I kind of like Bite. Um, yeah, I, I guess we should just probably be in green. And we can splash, green black splash this Radadabric. I said it wrong, but that guy. Radadabic? I think there's, I think you were very, very close. I have no idea. I'm bad at those things as well. So can we see who all, who all ended up in our pod? We've got Logic. Oh, wait, let's take our pick first. Here's a What's this, this green domain guy. Green domain guy. Yeah, the he's a wallet? grizzly bear, um, but he can pump itself. Yeah. That, that card's solid. Um, there's also a duel, but it looks like we can get duels later. So yeah, I'm looking at the root walla or the haunted mire. I think the duel will wheel. We've got a bunch and they seem to not be going yeah. super late. Yeah, we have gotten some late. I'll be a little greedy. Oh, and then we have more duels now, so we'll be okay. When the defender enters the battlefield, we have another one of the search. This um, is well, the little... This three drop draws a card and loses a life, which I thought was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, Phyrexian Rager is great, and this uh, entry is also pretty good, but I love Phyrexian Rager. I draft every one of these that I see. I would just take him. Great. One of my favorite cards to play in Limited, like of all time, probably. Uh, maybe this Enlist guy, this green Enlist guy might be pretty solid. This little three-drop turtle? Yeah, he's a turtle, huh? Uh-huh. Can try him out. Our curve isn't too yeah, high, we, I wouldn't even we, mind we taking one of these. We don't have very many threes. Yeah. It seems like we have plenty of twos and fours and we're a little bit low on threes. And I think the uh, Vigilance Trample guy is like kind of filler. I think we can find other... We can pick him up later. Yep. All agreed. right. This Ivy Spell Thief. That's a yep. rare. We got to read this one. Whenever a player casts a spell that targets only a single creature other than Ivy, you may copy it and have it copy target Ivy. So this would be like pump spells, protection it spells. Like pump yeah, like the bite spell, I guess. And what is this Morrow? It's like good with domain, right? 
Uh, yeah, it's power and toughness are equal to twice the number of basics. I think that's it. Yeah, let's do that. That seems like a good the other guy, like, like, we don't know if that card will be good in our deck. We have the Goblin Lord, Shore Up, Broken Wings, I guess another turtle? Yeah, sure, That we'd probably cut that guy, but, um, I, I mean, I could also see taking the Battle Rage Blessing, but I think that card is pretty filler, too. Oh, this card was actually pretty cool, too. Mm-hmm, that card's cool. We have uh, an old favorite in Gaia's Might. Yep. That's an old card from, from the past. And it's Domain, which is where we think we're going to be. Yeah. I, I would just do the Domain thing. Okay. I hope we wheel this Sentinel. Oh, look, it's a Mana Fixer. We can take the Mana Dork. Wait, what's this Bog Badger, though? Like, this uh, card... Uh, one this black to kick, and it gives all your creatures menace for the turn. That card also seems sweet. I don't know it what is. to do. They both seem sweet. I think it's I the Mana we, Dork. Yeah, the Mana Fixer seems important if we're playing all these colors. And we did just pick up a bunch of Hexbane Turtles, so our three-drop slot's, like, okay. Do we have anything to Bone Splinters? I don't think we do. Uh, one of our defenders that ETBs and already does something else, maybe? Yeah, I guess we can take the Bone Splinters for the sideboard, and if we end up getting, like, some tokens or things that we want to sack, we can play it. Uh, are we playing blue, or do we want a white defender? Um, I feel I, like... Well, I don't know if we're defenders is the thing, so, like... I don't either. ...is, like, a better, like, spec card. It's going too right. fast. I, the, rest, the rest are whatever. Yep. So we have this wall that finds a land for us, which I really like. And it's also something to sack to Bone Splinters. Mm -hmm. This is a pretty underwhelming pack for us in green, black, particularly. Uh, we yep. do have the cave as well, which just like if we decide to just be three colors, most of our dual lands don't really work. But right now we're just green, black, slash white. So cave might just be better. Yeah, but I, I think the, um, the plant... It finds us any uh, basic or or dual. It lets um, us which... look at the top six. Oh, look, it looks at the top six. Okay. Okay, that card was is weaker than I thought. It probably used to do something different. I mean, I would still play it, but, like, it's not as powerful as I thought it was. Same. I think we'll be able to possibly even pick that up. Here's another Might. We've got... Uh, this is the guy who comes back... I can return it, activate only if a non-skeleton creature has died this turn. Yeah, so if something if something dies in combat, you get to return this guy uh, for two mana. Kind of and, indifferent. And he blocks. A lot of cards like that usually can't block because they're just so recursive that they're like frustrating that they're, they're blocking no, all the time. No, he enters the battlefield this tapped. I like the Crystal block. Grotto. Uh, Personally, I would rather have one of the dual lands than the Crystal Grotto. It doesn't have a basic land type, so it makes our domain weaker. That's true. Uh, these are exactly our two colors that we're splashing. The Stronghold Arena, it's black and red. It comes, uh, you, you can kick it for up to six life. And then uh, whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage, reveal the top card and lose life equal to its CMC and put it into your hand. Um, we also have another... Uh, Territorial Morrow. What is this green blue thing? And the green blue thing is a domain. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of basic lands. Wow. So if you have full domain, you get to draw a card. If not, you don't get anything. Maybe we just do the Morrow here. Um, sure. That was a lot of text to read for a split second there. Yeah. So now we're on like. We really want all the duels because we have now several domain payoffs. Okay, Ooh, what's so this, this one? Raid? You can sack a creature to make somebody discard a card. Return target Return creature from your graveyard to your hand and target opponent sacrifices a creature or you draw a card and lose, uh, they lose two life. This card seems okay and has read ahead so you can like jump around yep. if you don't want to do one of them. Yeah, that card seems solid. 
We have a couple of two drops, so we don't really need to worry about the spinner so much. Uh, we found a duel. It's not necessarily in our colors, but... Yeah, we can also just do the gardener. Yeah. I kind of like the gardener. All right, let's do the gardener. Uh, a bear that scries whenever a creature dies, or this is the uh, two, two, it's a one, two for two. You can draw a card, then discard, and then uh, you can sack it to get an instant or sorcery back. Probably not for us. Yeah, probably not. I'm into the bear. I like bear. Oh, snap. This guy's pretty good. Uh, it's a. But double white. Ooh, double white is pretty rough. I think. We want, like, this sentry. Four mana, four, four reach. Okay. This isn't the one I thought it was anyway. Sacrifice another creature, put it... Oh, no, it is the one I thought it was. Dang, that card's yeah, so good. Yeah, like, yeah, this card is powerful, but I don't know if we can cast it. All right, Here's a... we got past the black-green card. This is exactly what we wanted. What does this yep. do? Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it were... Uh... It reanimates something? Yeah, and it goes back to your sure. hand, or... If, uh, or based on your domain, it could go into play. So when it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, choose a creature card, put it into your hand, unless you have domain equal or more than the CMC. Do you like Warhorse uh, or Apparition? I don't think I'd be happy playing either of these. Okay. So I, I guess we'll just do Warhorse and put it to the sideboard. Little swarm guy. All right, little swarm guy. He's solid. He trades with big stuff. All right, okay. we got a plant wall. Yes. We got your wall. I wanted him so bad. And, <laughs> or whatever. and we got the, the cave we wanted anyway. So we both got what we wanted. Hmm? All right, guys. Melissa will be answering your questions in just a few minutes. Let me... Uh, Build this deck real quick. Make some sweet cuts. We need nine cuts. Are we cutting the defender semi payoff guy? I think that would be just a yeah, pretty simple yeah. cut, right? I don't think we're doing defender stuff. All right, where was that guy? How much does he cost? Two? All right, uh, so we get rid of that. So we have, let's start just from the left, Battle Swarm. Bone Splinters, Pump Spell, and Tail Swipe. I think those are all fine-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Death Touch and Indestructible. Bear. Aggro Card, Bite Spell. Wall. And Root Walla. I think the Battle Rage Blessing can go. Okay. Uh, Braids. Oh, we, can, we can definitely cut something from here. Like I think we can cut one of these turtles. Agreed. I actually really still don't like the Threats Undetected card. Yeah, I, I don't think I do either. I think this card is just way too hard to get to work. We have our Bomb, our 4-4 four, four Reacher. This Enlist card is okay. Probably cutting both the Apparitions. Yeah, I think so. And keep Warhorse, because it's in our color, Splash color, and then we keep Sangir, Morrow, and the Reanimate spell. Yep. Sounds good. Now All we right. have to figure out our lands, like... I think we can play one planes. So to, so to get white, we have um, our two little green mana dorks. And we have a cave the, and planes. Yeah, so it's like four sources, which is not great, but it's only one card. Yeah, I think four sources and, for one card is pretty good. Yep. Um, and then we probably just run the rest. So like we can get domain five. It's not that likely, but it's possible. Yeah. I mean, our domain stuff oh, is going to be good. Land. What's up? We have to add a land. I, I will, yeah. I was uh, just cutting the one land, and then we'll count uh, like the cards. So it's like oh, 14 yeah, sure. and 10. And currently we have 5, 6, 7, 8 black sources and 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 green sources. Thoughts? So 9 green and... Eight black. Uh, eight. We probably just need another green. I don't think our deck functions without green mana, so... 
probably just need as, as many green as we can six, realistically play. Seven, eight, nine, ten green, five, six, seven, eight black. I think that's good. Yeah, I think so too. Like, I, I think like our deck can function if we don't draw black mana for like a few turns, but like we can't play magic without green in play. All right. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of pilot this and Melissa's going to sort of backseat game and answer some questions and hang out with chat. Um, you don't need to read their names. Just read the questions if there's anything that you see that you want to answer. And uh, for those of you guys watching on the YouTube uh, channel, make sure you guys leave us a comment and let you know what you thought of our first draft. All right. So now I'll ask, what do you think about our deck? Oh, I think it's pretty medium. Yeah, me too. I think it's just medium. It's it's nothing special. We had a hard time finding a lane, which was a little yeah. sad, but fine. Yeah, and honestly, I think that is going to happen with this draft format. Like, I without, think, like, I think you throw this color back. Pair. Yeah, this doesn't do anything until turn four. It was a little too slow. Great. Keep. Um, I... I, I think, honestly, I would just throw back a forest here. Yeah, I was thinking a forest or the war horse, but we are on the draw, so I think we can be a little Yeah, greedy. and we have a read, right? We can get, um, draw our next land. Agreed. Yeah, I'm much happier with this now. Play a root walla. We're playing against Caleb. Hello, Caleb. Do we like trading root walla for herbalist? I don't think so. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, I guess we can just trade with the Rager. I think like, so. Like, that's a way better trade. Oh, no stuff. What does that do? You can sack a creature to make them discard. It's yep. not time for that yet. No, I, I think, think we so need either. the Rager here. I like Rager. Or helps us hit our land drop. Can we attack? What, what can they do? I, I don't really know what, what the tricks are. I don't know either. I mean, there's one that deals damage based on like their their, their, their domain, but they're gonna have all that stuff anyway. There is, uh, there's the one, called it. And I'm totally fine with trading for that, I think. We have to eat it eventually anyway. Yeah, it's not like we're activating that. Trade? Yeah, I think so. I'm okay with this. Especially because I think this gets a card Return target card from your graveyard to your hand, so oh, nice. kind of... Man, we missed another land drop, though. That's okay, we have a death toucher. I know. And, like, but once I... we start drawing lands, we'll be in a good spot. Because, like, our opponent is down on cards now. Yeah, I kind of like... If they attack, I don't like blocking. What do you think? Oh, because you want to just get other stuff in play. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I can see not blocking. One turn. It's a lot of... This is a fight, though. I don't think we want to tail swipe this floor. I don't think so either. We're I don't think so either. Thing anyway. Another one. Jeez. Well, so our options are... Um, so what does the Ratadabric do again? Um, it's a 3-3, three, three, right? Yeah, it's just a 3-3 with Vigilance and Ward whenever another legendary creature you control dies. Which we oh. will have some, but not a bunch. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good play here. Like, you can probably do something like Raid's Frightful Return to return the Rager and just plan on blocking this turn. It puts it into your hand. Yes. Yeah, it does. But, like, so, like, the plan is... Use this to block because we don't have any other good way to deal with the four fours. And yeah. get the Rager next turn. And then our options are like bone splinters, a way to kill the thing, or play a war horse or something. Oh, we have to choose where. So we want to start it on um, two. Two. Yep. Yep. And if they. The nice thing, too, is if they decide to try to have a removal spell for the uh, Gardener here, we could still Tail Swipe in response. Yep. I don't love it, Good but point. I think... I 
hate it. It's not the worst. It's fine. Alright, what do we got here? A 3-2 and a 2-2 two -two first strike. Okay, that let us hit a land is kind of nice. So we have Rager. We can Gaia's Might to kill something. We can Tail Swipe something also. Uh, well, yes, we can do all of the above. So we Gaia's Might... And then I think we block one, and then and then tail swipe. So we block uh, Gaia's might, tail swipe. Um, what does it give? Plus three. Uh, mm -hmm. so like if we tail swipe, it's a fight. So we're just gonna end up doing a bunch of trades. So it's get, no, it's could... gonna give plus four, plus four. So it's gonna be a six six. So wait, isn't it for each land type we have? Oh, we have four in play. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. We have domain five next turn, that's funny. Four, five, what do six. these creatures do, by the way? Like, what so is the one, three, two? One of them is, uh, your creatures get plus one, plus one mm -hmm. till end of turn. So I think what we do is we go to blocks and we block here. That's the block. Mm-hmm. We kind of hope that he pumps all of his stuff. Mm -hmm. He can pump the Dawn Heart a couple of times. I see. I'm okay with this. And then in response, right. I think I tail swipe the 4-4. Four four. Yep, sounds good. So we'll just do a bunch of trades here. Um, and then he's left with a 3-2, and we have a war horse and a bone splinter and this other thing. Sure. That's pretty good. So what does this kicker cost? Uh, is it is it five mana to make uh, the one one? Yeah. So Let's I think make sure good. we leave a black card. Oh, good, a tap right for us. Should we go ahead and just bone splinters this? I think I would. Like, I don't really see a, a good way to. Uh, yeah, I I don't see a, a better line here. I think you just want to bone splinter. I'm just worried that he like untaps and plays like a massive green thing. Yeah, sure. Okay. We don't have to. We could just trade with the horse. And the other thing is, is it also triggers with the, like, the sand gear next turn? Yeah, sure. We can do that. That seems okay. safe enough. Splinter is a sorcery. Yeah, I know. That's why we were deciding before we uh, went to end step. All right, my turn. Oh. I like that. Nice. Just is anything on, on in play a zombie? Is our warhorse a zombie? It's a Phyrexian warhorse. Oh no, it's not even a zombie. No, it just makes its own Ooh. zombies. Do you like Sanger here? Yeah, I do. And now do we want to trigger, maybe play the Bone Splinters? Like, I think we can attack with the horse and, like, see if if uh, he wants to trade. Probably just won't. And then we can maybe Bone Splinters after that and then we'll have a 4-4. Four four. Hmm. Oh no. What's this? Destroy target creature oh. with flying. If we sack this, what does it cost to pump this warhorse one mana? Yep. But then we are open to... True. Yeah. Alright, now I think we have to bone splinters it. Alright. 
and just hope that there's no massive tough at deck. So, I mean, we can, we have big creatures on our deck, too. Oh, no! A flyer! Oh, no. But we oh, do no. have a five mana in our deck. Let's see if we can race this. We cannot. We're at five! We, we have... We have three turns. Well, we have two turns. Well, whatever they- if they play a creature, the next turn they just enlist it and kill us, right? Oh no, this has enlist? Yes. Yeah, fair enough. Oh no, our bone splinters plan did not work. Oh no, it's another land! We're not dead yet. They're at eight. If we top deck- if they have nothing again and just hit us with just this bird, uh, then yeah, we, we can. Creature, yeah, if we could play a creature and then sack it with the warhorse, we're not dead. But I can't imagine they have nothing. I mean, they only have six lands in play, so. Oh no! Oh no! A token! Where's our reach creature? No! <laughs> More land! Nothing gains life, does it? I don't think so. Well, GG. We tried real hard. I knew that Bone Splinters using that was going to be bad, but we had plenty of Reachers, we have other removal, we had stuff we could do, unfortunately. That is a shame. We flooded out here a little bit at the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten land. That's a lot of land. Mm-hmm. Pretty close, though. I'm surprised the race was as close as it was. I feel like just one, one spell. And now we're playing against a blue robot. And we mulliganed that game, too, so. We did mulligan, and we missed a, a land drop, and we were uh, put behind when we had to play that saga. Oh, yeah, massively. This hand seems great. Agreed. All right, Rootwalla or the Toxic Abomination? Yeah, I think we just want to be aggressive. I think so. Um... Do we want to trade this? What is this creature? A 2-1, uh, what else does it do? It's unblockable when they cast an instant or sorcery. Yeah, I think I would be happy to trade it. If you would have pumped the Sangir, they would have killed it. I was not ever going to pump the Sangir. Uh, the, the question was just holding back and letting them remove the Sangir and not attacking with the horse. The pump spell was already gone by the time we made that play. I think we root wall and try to find... I think we vine wall to try to find a tapped land first. Oh, uh, yeah. Before um, playing a yeah, land. Sure. Okay. All right. Because we don't have a three drop anyway, so, and you said you were okay to trade? Sure, yeah. I think it's fine-ish. I think our deck can be grindy and we can make this trade. Uh, we could double two drop or we can warhorse. Yeah, good. Or uh, or the other thing, the two five. Yeah. I'm worried because they just threw out a bounce spell that their deck is just going to be full of bounce spells, which makes me kind of want to double spell. Yeah, you want to Yeah. Yeah, same. I like that. I just think with how far behind we were, attacking with the horse just was put us in a sort of like sticky spot. Oh no, they played a rare on us. Oh, goodbye little wall. Do we want this oh. land? Yeah, I think we do want the land 
because like I think we want to eventually play the six drop and we can play the warhorse with the little one one next turn. Yeah, I was thinking about that. Like we don't have anything to do with it just yet, but do we attack with the root walla? Yeah, I think we attack with the root walla because I don't think this player will block. And if they do block, I think we're happy. Agreed. And we have domain four. Yeah. I think we play this crusher. Okay, we can make it big. Oh, I guess we could we could also uh, kick the horse. Actually, that might be better. We can kick the horse. I think I like that more. All right, let's kick the horse. Two bodies is better against all the bounce and removal that they have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Fair enough. I like the little chains, that's cute. Yeah, the um, new visual mechanic for that is pretty cute. Oh, what does this do? Target player mills for. Oh wow, self mill. Oh boy. And they're just going oh, in for. Bigger. And all right. And what else does this card do? Like, what what's going to happen next? Uh, it's going to be exile target instant of sorcery. You may copy it and cast it this turn. Oh, and it, we might just be dead. Um, I don't think we're dead. Like, I we're at nine. I don't think we're dead next turn. I think we can get in there with everything and um. Maybe play the six drop and get a creature back. Yeah, the only thing we can get back is just the... Want to play the. Yeah, that that's unfortunate, but like maybe he'll block something. I don't think so. <laughs> Not with this guy being unblockable with everything he does, but. Okay, so now do we want to do Crusher into this lose two life thing, or do you think we'll we'll die? We might I die, think, huh? I think if we go to seven, we'll die because they have okay. five damage on board right now, and then we might just die. Alright. So we'll just play that, and then find a land. And hope that maybe, uh... Maybe, like, the domain pump spell will let us race this, maybe? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this little haunting figment is putting in some good work. He is going to make his gen smaller, by the way. Yeah. Still a tough spot for us, I think. For sure. Oh no, we can't cast that either, or otherwise oh, we no, just die. The ranger, no. Okay, so we have domain four. So we're four, still off. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We're off by one. We're off by one. But hey, maybe our opponent won't have an instant or sorcery. That seems unlikely. I don't think we pump. I guess it doesn't matter if we do or not, because if they have anything that answers the root walla, we just die. Yeah, I, I think we don't pump and we just play like this crusher. Yeah. And just hope that you're right, they, they don't have our sorcery. One instant or sorcery, that's all we ask that you do not have. One time, one turn. Oh, they don't have it. They don't have it. So wow. they can't kill us. They have to block our root walla. We 
Will they attack? I think they can safely not. attack for two, and then oh, they can jump our two biggest things. Okay. They have to jump the root walla, but then we still just die to the djinn the following turn. Um, so we can enlist something to force the block, like we can enlist the this Phyrexian guy here. And they are forced to block they're forced to jump block both. Right? Uh no, they could no, let the four from the crusher go through. Right? Uh yeah. Yep. Um if if we attack with the one one as well, they have to block at least one of them. But Yeah. I, yeah, I guess I guess they just don't um we just can't win this. Oh wait, 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 cancel. Okay, so this Oh this glad does to not attack. Us. Actually, if we don't enlist, don't we get in more... Uh, well, we actually want to kill their stuff, though. Yep. But they can just block the 1-1 in this world. Well, they might also try to play around a pump spell and actually just chump block both. And if that's the case, if we get them to chump both of them, then we'd, we're not dead next turn if they don't have a spell. True. Which they didn't last turn, so now we are hoping that they feel the need to double chump. And this warhorse was locked down forever. It was. They're not going to play around a pump spell. Oh no. Ooh. Big boo. Our problem was we didn't have anything with me. Or no way to kill a flyer. We keep losing to flyers. Yep. Maybe spider would have been better than we thought. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have pumped there. Maybe I should have played the rager. There it is! Well, no. Not not really, because we did try uh, a thing away. Yeah, we scried something away when it died. So even if we had played that pre-combat, we wouldn't have gotten there. Oh man, Melissa, we're not doing so hot. No, we're really not. Also, I think our decks suck. What no, do you, think? you you cannot enlist something with summoning sickness. It's very specifically only stuff that is not summoning sick, which is weird. Mm -hmm. Like it makes sense as an ability. I think it would be really, really strong, too strong. But we're used to seeing cards like in Capenna, where we had the. Um, Civil Servant, the 2-3 cat that could uh, tap a another um, citizen and get plus one plus oh, and that citizen could be summoning six. So it's kind of like the way we're used to seeing them structured, but yeah, these ones are a bit different. <laughs> uh Wolf is telling us, I don't know if you know, Melissa, but because we don't have flyers, we either have to have reach or kill spells for the flyers. I, oh. I guess we messed up. I, I was or unaware. Or we can kill them before the flyers kill us. <laughs> There's always that strategy. Ignore the flyers. <laughs> we do have some removal and reach, um, but like, you know, you can't uh, guarantee have that you draw them all. Reach. We do. We have the 4-4 four, four for, for reach. Sideboard plummet, but this is best of one, so... Eh. The second we main, main, uh, main the plummet, we'll never see another flyer ever again. Yeah, like... Like, let's... Use, like, I don't know. So far, we played two opponents. They both had flyers that killed us. We have a flyer. For, like, it is a very small sample size, but so far... In 100% of the decks we've seen, they all had flyers. Yeah. I feel like we did get a little bit unlucky uh, against Caleb, right? Getting stuck on land um, and then flooding out massively with 10 lands at the end was absolutely brutal. And it was still a pretty close game. This is the same opponent that we had last time. Okay, okay. 
Well, that's just what happens at the end of the night in the early access. There's just not enough opponents available. Uh, this hand is bad. Agreed. We, we can't keep this. This hand is so clunky. Well, on the plus side, we're learning a lot in this draft. We're learning that... We're learning how not to draft. Also, this hand seems great. It does. Throw back a swamp? Yeah, well, I think we only have one double black card, so... Uh, we, we also have a lot of black sources, so that seems fine. Yep. Quick shout out to Zormron42. Really do appreciate your subscription. Uh, 26 months of support. Thank you, thank you. Oh, awesome. And King of Fu, also 12 months. Happy one year anniversary. Thank you for the support. Really appreciate you. Yeah, I like Mana Dork into Moro. Moro's just going to be kind of huge. Yep, love it. I love how, like, this guy's name is Mana Dork. It's like, who is this? Oh, that's Manador. I mean... We'll never call this card by its real name. I mean, that's just the name of all cards that do this action. I mean, I can't help it. I didn't make the rules. Oh, really? Jin again? It's the same opponent, and it's... I don't know, it's kind of small right now. Maybe we'll be okay. We got our Reach creature, at least. Should we just jam this 6-6 six, six yeah, and race? Yeah, let's go 6-6. Six, six. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And also next turn will be an 8-8. Eight, eight. We have a mountain in our hand. I'm a little worried about the bounce spells. Bounce? Like, they showed us multiple bounce spells last turn. All right, we got there. What does this do? It bounces our Oh, creature. no! Oh, no, another bounce! And every single time they play uh, a spell now, it gets massive, too. They only have two cards. What are the odds they bounce this again? We're probably going to find out. <laughs> yep. And then the nice thing is, is Our hopefully we can go... 80. Oh, it's going to be no! tapped for three turns instead. So many stuns. Yeah. And now we're going to take oodles of damage. On the plus side, we can play two spells this turn. Yeah. This Gitu amplifier? He seems great. Yes, he does. So what do you think? Two spells? Like, I was thinking Rager Tortoise. Uh, mostly because... I like the our Reach creature. Oh, yeah, I actually, I did forget this card had Reach. That seems great. The question is, is do we want to play the two drop that loses two life? Yes, now that we have a Reach creature, we have to do it. Now that Now's we can block chance. the gin. Yeah. And we just hope they don't have it for a turn. Just don't have it. Another one. Jeez. Oh no. This card reminds me of one of my favorite cards from an older draft format called Ogre Savant. It was a it was an is it card from Ravnica, like from a, the first Ravnica set. Um and it was just a five mana uh, blue red card that bounced a creature. And it was just like the deck was just so tempo oriented, it was just like you could just the opponent could never keep anything in play. You just draft a bunch of these. They were common. They're really powerful. Yep, we'll block. Yeah, I Do think they worst. have one of the spells that make it smaller. There's the last mm -hmm. spell. So it's going to trade, but I'm okay with that. That's, that's totally fine. Unfortunately, it did redraw as well, which is really gross. But... But hey, we have this Reach guy. Yeah. And another 2-drop. What can go wrong? Oh boy. They can't possibly have another thing. 
Oh my gosh, they didn't have a thing. They wow. didn't have another thing. Holy smokes. That's amazing. I kind of like bone splintering this gin. All right, what are we saying goodbye to? I'm thinking we, do we rager and then bone splinters that? Yeah, we could. Um, hopefully we draw a land so we can also play the tortoise. Uh, well, oh, if we bone splinter, we the won't be able to- seems... uh, play, like, Playing this first seems fine though. We won't be able to play the tortoise if we're gonna bone splinters it. We'd still be short, right? But we need to draw land here. All right, we didn't, but that's fine. Does this card have ward or no? It doesn't, right? It looks Negative. like it didn't, because it prompted you. Okay. I, didn't I want think them I to... like no attack right now. Agreed. But next turn, I think we can start attacking. Also, now we have an 8 8. And a flyer. Yeah, so we can get this flyer out there. And I like just going in with the 8 8. Yep, me too. We can go start going in with the Death Toucher soon, too. Mana Dork. Uh huh. Oh no! Oh shoot! I thought it was I thought it was flying. Who's that? Who, who's uh, this guy? You may cast instant sorceries as though they had flash. Uh, when it attacks, you may pay two. If you do, when you cast your next instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy it and choose new targets. Gross. Yeah, but they don't have anything. We can play both right. of our spells. Do you like attacking with the Death Toucher? Uh, I believe yes. I think. We can't play both of our spells, so you're right. And... Do we want to attack with more stuff? Like, can we also send in the 4-4? It's lethal. Is the 4-4 lethal? I mean, they just chump the 8-8 well, yeah. the and then... Right, but like, if we attack with just the 8-8 and the 1-1, they don't need to block anything. And in the world where we attack with the 4-4 also, they have to at least throw a creature away. Yeah, are, are we not worried about any sort of thing that could possibly give flying or I guess, I guess I, yeah I don't know what, what, what if you give flying but like they have one card in hand and if we make this attack they have to throw a creature away yeah I feel like Which they makes will our regardless thing bigger. and especially like considering we have two follow up creatures that like makes the uh, additional attack less risky. Yeah. And one of these is flying, so if there's any sort of like haste flyer or scary spell. I'm just worried about when this attacks, they can cast something twice. Yeah, is... but there is nothing we can really do about that, you know? What you got? I want my mommy. I know it's so scary. If, if they have like something like lightning strike, we're just straight up dead. They can just attack and play that twice. Yep. I think if they did, they wouldn't be slow rolling it still. Ooh, what does this do? They can cast something from their graveyard. What yep. do they Exile have? target instant or sorcery, and they can cast it, and they're picking an impulse, so they're gonna dig for Oh, deep. they're looking for lightning strike. This is so exciting. Oh no, shush. Oh god, they picked so quickly. Oh, oh, lightning. oh my god, did they draw did they get the lightning strike? They probably got it. No. Stop it. They're reading their card. They're like all right, does this lightning strike kill the opponent? Reading it again. They're yeah, they're rewriting the storm runner. Oh my god, what if it's a, if it's a bounce spell? We're still kind, we're still okay. Yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're still we're very more than okay if it's. I'm a bounce worried spell. it's gonna be the card that like taps down creatures or something. It's gonna be so bad. There's a spell that taps down two things, but it's I think it's white. Let's go, lightning okay. strike. 
Okay. So they're bouncing two things. And none of these things have trample. And then we just block two things? Yeah. Oh! Hold on to your butts. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. All right, now let's see if we play against this opponent a third time. Yeah, um... Because this deck is hard to beat. It would be a, a two out of three. We were on the draw both games, too. 